Fever FM, the number one choice in Leeds. Now we have uh, Ben here sitting in front of me, and uh, let me introduce Ben to you. And I'm going to ask you, Ben, first of all, tell us, uh, you know, about yourself, please. Everything and anything you can. My name is Ben. Um, so I don't really de define myself as sort of being in recovery. And I try not to de define myself by my issues either. Right. Um, I think the place where I'm at the moment is I'm, I'm trying, to stop trying to create a stronger identity for myself that's based on the person that I am now okay. rather than the, my past and my, my sort of younger version of myself which was very sort of troubled and uh, quite vulnerable I would say. Right, okay. Mental health, mental illness, depression, anxiety issues. Mm. I think for a lot of years I was quite suicidal as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please try to, you know, you know, at your own pace, try to take me through how or when the problem started. If you don't mind, it may help some of the listeners. We yeah. Have. Well, I think from quite a young age, I felt like I was, this is after a lot of reflection on the past and the, the younger, my younger self. I think I was quite neglected. Like emotionally, I was abandoned by my mum and I was quite neglected by my dad. Right. So I had an absent mother and an and, uh, emotionally unavailable father. Okay. So you could say I had no family, parenting, nurturing whatsoever right. from a young age. Mm. I think as a, as a consequence of that, as I started to get to my late teens, I started to develop a lot of issues with depression and anxiety and felt like I had nobody to share my... Um, the truth really, how I really felt. Mm. So I developed all these very un unhealthy coping styles. I see. So, you know, at that time nobody were advising you to do anything about siblings and parents no. or family apart from your mum and dad? No, that was kind of a sad thing. I was kind of left to my own devices really. Um, and just, I think just become quite a, an avoidant person. You know, quite avoidant of people as well, and, and sort of closeness with people and connection. Mm. Um, and you turned to, do you mind, you know, telling us what sort of drugs did you start off with? I, I turned to, I, yes, but it was drinking and drugs to begin with, and then sort of the drugs wasn't doing it for me. I think it was the drinking that got me to that place where I needed to be of complete oblivion. Nothing. Yeah, alcohol, yeah. Alcohol or yes. What would you say, you know, how many pints or shots or whatever you used to drink? I think from when I just start, started to develop a dependency, which was my early 20s, I, I was probably uh, drinking between 20 and 30 units every single day. On that continued. 30 units? Yeah, easily, yeah. And that continued from my early 20s, that continued to when I stopped, mm. which was 40. So that's a huge chunk of my life. And what's the legal limit? Is it about seven or...? 20 or 30 units. I would say, at my worst, I was drinking... Check, 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 <laughs> at, my, at my worst, I was probably drinking about three, three bottles of wine... I see. ...a day. Right. Yeah. For 15 years. Ooh. Yes. Mm. So, you mm. know, what sort of mood did that sort of make you? I suppose drinking three bottles of wine or something like that would have an effect you know, I knew you wouldn't see things properly or and also at the same time you're not helping yourself. It kind of made me numb to my emotions and I think that was the root of the problem was the emotional pain I was in and the vulnerability that I felt from a young age really. So did you believe that, you know, at that time it was helping you sort of take up you know, away from the situation you were in. Absolutely. It is, it's a, that's the other aspect of it, it's the escapism. Mm. It's the escapism from the, from the underlying problems that you don't yet quite understand, mm. I think. What's at the root of it, really? What's at the root of your, of your pain and your suffering and your vulnerability? It was, why do you really feel that way? Because they have roots in your childhood, I think. Are you able to take uh, us through your life slowly, you know, some highs and lows? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I could, like from a young age, I was really bright at school. I used to get straight A's and, and all that. Really? Until, yeah. yeah, yeah. Until high school, the bullying and the, the couple of the double traumas that I suffered, losing my mum, 
mm. and the bullying both occurred at the same time. Oh, I see. And that's, I think that changed my personality drastically. I went from being quite an outgoing kid, popular, friends, yeah. to being very withdrawn in a very short space of time. Used to come home, go straight to my bedroom, didn't want to talk to anybody. Mm. It sort of changed me a lot. I went from quite an extroverted, sort of temperamentally, to very introverted. Mm. Just wanted to be on my own all the time. And that's a pattern that continued throughout many, many years after that. But I suppose after school, I could have gone to university, I think, and followed the same, same path as some of my siblings. Yes. Could have followed some of my music dreams and gone to music college, which is what I would have liked to have done. Mm. Become a music student, studied guitar, songwriting, um, and taken a musical path, I think, would have yeah. been my dream. Yeah, music is something which helps everyone. It's so good for everyone. Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's so, t tell me, tell me please, uh, you know, uh, when did you realise that you had a problem? Or did you ever realise? Yeah, I, th I think maybe, maybe like subconsciously, I've always been uh, deep down. I, I kind of know, I knew what the problems were, but more upsettingly, I kind of knew what the solutions were as well for me. So, but I, I, I felt, felt like I got myself so deep into so many uh, unhealthy, pathologized ways of coping. Mm. Uh, it was sort of obscuring me from the, what the truth is, like from me, Ben, yeah. you know, what, what my life path should be, what my journey should be. Um, and did you, you know, when did you realize that, no, well, this is not you know, the right thing for me to do, I want a different journey, I want to be Ben? T two and a half years ago, actually. Just after my 40th birthday. Was it, you know, something which triggered it, or was it just that, yourself? Uh, did absolutely. I, I had a third suicide attempt. I've had three suicide attempts in the last 15 years. And then, to cut a long story short, I had a massive breakdown mm. uh, over like a two-year period. The alcoholism, the, the, uh, the isolation, cut off from my family, friends. I just ended up on my own with the drinking. Mm. Not my little coping behaviours. Um, you said that you just went in your room and sort of stayed by yourself. Was there any reason, you know, obviously, you know, you're probably intoxicated or high or whatever sort of thing. Were you, you know, sort of um, violent towards your friends or family or friends or, you know, were you sort of annoying them or whatever you said? No, not at all. Not at all. I think it was like the opposite of that, really. I become an extremely reclusive person. Mm. So I, I wasn't really coming into contact with people, including my family. Mm. I sort of kept everybody at distance, pushed everybody away, and ended up very much on my own. Mm. Not a nice experience, was it? No, no, not at all. I think deep down, that sort of connection that we all need with, e with each other and those strong bonds that we need to make, mm. I was sort of craving that deep down. But I felt so trapped and so vulnerable, really. Um, I kind of accepted my situation. Uh, but it's not what I wanted for myself. It really wasn't. But 